Three light bulbs are connected to a 9-volt battery, and while at first glance this might seem like a complex circuit, we can actually break it down with a few key ideas and some trusty formulas. We're going to calculate three things. The total current from the battery, the current through each bulb, and the resistance of each bulb. Even though we're only told the power consumed by each bulb, don't panic. Just treat each bulb like a resistor that glows. Let's begin by understanding how the circuit is wired, because the layout tells us a lot about how current flows. Picture the current leaving the battery. We'll call that total current I1. As it reaches a junction, it splits into two separate branches. One part flows through a single bulb, and the other part flows through two bulbs connected in series. We'll call the currents in these two branches I2 and I3. Now here's where Kirchhoff's current law comes in. It's a simple but powerful rule that says the total current entering a junction must equal the total current leaving it. So in this case, I1 equals I2 plus I3. No current vanishes into thin air or magically appears. It all has to be accounted for. And this equation is our first clue to unlocking how the current is distributed across the circuit. Now let's turn our attention to the voltages in the circuit because voltage tells us how much energy each charge carries as it moves through each bulb. The 20 watt bulb is the easiest to deal with. It's connected directly across the battery terminals. So it receives the full nine volts without any sharing. The other two bulbs, however, the 15 watt and 10 watt ones, are in the second branch and connected in series. That means the same current flows through both, but the voltage is divided between them. Since they share the same loop, the voltages across them, which we'll call V1 and V2, must add up to the total supplied by the battery. In other words, V1 plus V2 equals 9 volts. We may not yet know exactly how that 9 volts is divided, but this relationship gives us a crucial constraint to work with as we move forward. All right, here's a key idea that brings the whole picture into focus. We're told how much power each light bulb consumes, but where does all that energy originate? The answer lies with the battery. It's the sole energy provider for the entire circuit. That means whatever power the bulbs are using has to come directly from the battery, no exceptions. So if the bulbs are consuming 15 watts, 10 watts, and 20 watts respectively, the total power consumption is 45 watts. And that tells us something important. The battery must be supplying 45 watts of power to keep everything running. In other words, it's pumping out 45 joules of energy every single second to keep those bulbs glowing. With this in mind, we now have a strong grasp on how current, voltage, and power are working together across the circuit. At this point, it's time to bring in one of the most powerful and frequently used formulas in all of electricity. Power equals voltage times current, or P equals V times I. This equation is our go-to tool whenever we're dealing with electrical power and energy. Now let's put it to work on our first task. We already know that the battery supplies 45 watts of power and operates at 9 volts. Plugging those values into the formula gives us 45 equals 9 times I. Solving for I, we find that the total current flowing from the battery is 5 amps. That means the battery is sending out 5 amps of current into the circuit to power all three bulbs. It's a clean, straightforward calculation. Now that we know the total current flowing out of the battery is 5 amps, Let's break that down and figure out how much current flows through each individual bulb. We'll start with the 20-watt bulb, since it's the simplest. This bulb is connected directly across the full 9 volts of the battery and isn't sharing its path with any other components. So we use our trusty formula again, P equals V times I. Plugging in the values, we get 20 equals 9 times I, which gives us I equals 2.22 amps. That means 2.22 amps flow through the 20 watt bulb alone. Since the total current leaving the battery is 5 amps, the difference 5 minus 2.22 must be flowing through the other branch of the circuit. That gives us 2.78 amps, which is shared by the 15 watt and 10 watt bulbs in series. And remember, since those two bulbs are in series, that same 2.78 amps flows through both of them equally. Now for the final step, Finding the resistance of each bulb. Let's begin with the 20-watt bulb, which is the easiest to handle because we know both the voltage across it, 9 volts, 
and the current flowing through it, 2.22 amps. So we just apply Ohm's law, which gives us approximately 4.05 ohms. That's the resistance of the 20 watt bulb, nice and clean. Now the other two bulbs, the 15 watt and 10 watt ones, are a bit more challenging since they're in series and we don't know the individual voltage drop across each. But we do know that both bulbs share the same current, 2.78 amps, and we're given their power consumption. So instead of juggling voltage, we use a more efficient combined formula. P equals I squared times R. This is a combined formula that comes from merging the power equation with Ohm's law. Plugging in the numbers for each bulb gives us their individual resistances directly. No need to worry about voltage splits. And just like that, we've calculated the resistance for all three bulbs, wrapping up the analysis and proving once again that with the right tools, even a tangled-looking circuit becomes a straightforward problem to solve.